Picks. Hey everyone and welcome to another edition of Steve's Hat Picks presented by Warrior Hockey where I look at the best of the NHL from the past week or just generally stuff that made me go woo. And I tell you what, to start us off, it has to be the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks run has been fascinating to me, especially the part where some fans were like, no, no, I don't even want to make the playoffs because I want a shot at Lafreniere. What? Why? Well, to make it easier to compete for the Stanley Cup. Oh, true. Well, how do you compete for the Stanley Cup? Well, first you gotta make- MAKE THE PLAYOFFS! Thank you! And here they are. Now, it's a 2-2 series. The Blues have roared back. But the Vancouver Canucks took the first two games of the series and pretty convincingly. Well, in yeah, one game, uh, it depends who you ask. But these two plays out of them in particular made me go, ooh. Let's start with Canucks up, game one. They gotta lock it down. Jake Markstrom, man. Driven back to the captain once again. He'll thread it through for Schwartz. Kicked out, rebound, and a wide with Markstrom down. And O'Reilly with a chance. Now to the line, kept in by Petrangelo. What Adam Markstrom, and that puck sat there for a second. It was a real smart play. That shot right there whoa, was off the pad, off the skate of Edler, and almost finds itself into the net. You have got to be kidding me. So during this highlight, Canucks up two with a minute 50 left. But what we have learned so far in these playoffs is that a minute 50 is a long time. And the St. Louis Blues aren't the reigning Stanley Cup champions for nothing. They're going to get shots through. And they kind of get two for the price of one here. Markstrom kicks the first. First one out, hits Alex Edler's skate, and oh my goodness. You know, they say the person we spend the most time competing with is ourselves. Well, in this battle of Jake Markstrom versus Jake Markstrom, Jake Markstrom won. This two for the price of one save to lock down the game one win, oh yeah, that's a hat pick. But don't worry, no matter, said everyone who picked the St. Louis Blues in the series. Any team can win one game in a series. Let's see him win two. And to that, Bo Horvat said, let's. Play there by Tanev, and away goes Horvat again. What a move by Horvat! Scores! Bo Horvat did that, and the Canucks have the lead. Are you kidding me? Game number one had a terrific individual effort, walked around done, and tucked it home for the fourth goal of the game for the Canucks to make it 4 2. And here, what a beautiful couple moves! Bo Horvat is feeling it. One move, another dangle around Schwartz. He catches a forward back in a defensive position, and he just challenges. And you like to see this confidence from Bo Horvat. Up the ice, couple of great moves, and then to finish it off on the forehand side past Bennington for a 1-0 lead. Bo! Mr. Horvat after that goal. Bo Sif, are you kidding me? The Stanley Cup playoffs are a fun time. First of all, they cut the amount of teams in half and it's only the best of the best. They're an education in a way. You didn't have to tell me Bo Horvat's good. I know Bo Horvat's good. I didn't know he was that good. First, he dangles Braden Shen out of his jock. And then you see Smaltz just standing there like, I, I didn't think he would get this far. Well, he did, and he scored, and the look on Jordan Bennington's face says it all. Oh, uh, this is gonna be in a hat picks video. Jordan, that is correct. I mean, does Chris Cuthbert's call not say it all? Play there by Tanev, and away goes Horvat again. What a move by Horvat! Scores! He did do that, Chris. He did. And that's a hat pick. For our next hat pick, and sticking with the theme of Herculean rushes, Alexander Wenberg. Oh, oh no, Kevin Chattenkirk. Keeps it ahead now, picked off by Foodie. He's got Wenberg with him. Lead pass for Alexander Wenberg. Columbus is changing. Wenberg, great move. It scores! Wow. Alexander Wenberg, wow. what a dash! All by himself. Puts the Blue Jackets up by two. You're not kidding all by himself. I mean, literally all by himself. Everybody else was chicken salad out of something less than that, didn't he? Watch this play. Right here, through the legs against Kevin Shattenkirk, and then a great finish. <laughs> you like them apples, Brian? <laughs> How do you even go back to the bench after that? Kevin, listen. I know, I know! Wenberg with the between the legs from behind and off the skate. NHL 20 cheese deke. You know it's cheese. You see that one guy in the ASHL who does like three of those dekes off the opening faceoff in the neutral zone. You're like, this is going to be a long game. Yeah, all right. Well, imagine having to face that in real life. That's what Kevin Chattenkirk had to do. And then all Wenberg had to do after that was ah, just beat Andre Vasilevsky. Just, just, just beat one of the best goalies in the league. And he did. 
Wow, is that epic? What a goal. Okay, let's change the pace a little bit because goalies have been getting beaten up in this video so far. Let's go to a goalie thriving. Carey Price is used to the same storyline basically every playoff series he enters with the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, Carey Price is going to have to come up big. And, I mean, he makes $10 million, so like, yeah. But no joke, 24 teams were invited to this bubble system here and the Habs were 24th. And they found a way to beat Pittsburgh and make it. Now they take on the number one ranked Philadelphia Flyers. Carey Price is going to have to be massive. Is this clutch enough for you? There's a turnover. Konechny comes in with Hayes. They're two on one. The centering pass. Kevin Hayes in front. Lawton drilled a shot and he missed the net. Well, a great chance for Philadelphia, but this is just an absolutely fabulously desperate save by Price. Oh, a turnover by Kulak at the line and watch the middle of the net is wide open and it looks like it hits Suzuki, but it doesn't. It's Price in desperation going across the end of his stick. The blade just gets over in time. Suzuki puts his head down. Lawton thinks he's got a wide open net and Price. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay, okay, I, I gotta talk over this. First, Kevin Hayes with the move that, like, this could have been an embarrassing goal against Carey Price. But as Fast and Furious taught me, you never almost win a race. You almost scored a goal. Did you score or not? Scott Lawton with the shot. Carey Price just gets a piece of it with his stick. Just show it again. Just show it again and show it forever and show it as many times as you have to. This is the save of the year. How? And a very underrated part of the save. Forget the fact that it's desperation. Just, just goaltending. Mwah, beauty. Carey Price like saved Nick Suzuki here. Like look at this. The guy just he dives into the net. Doesn't even think about anything. But then he turns his back. You talk about laying it all on the line for your team. What if that gets him in the neck? The exposed part of the back of his skull, man. They say goalies are weird, but it takes a true maniac to jump into a net like that. I, I think they call that a playoff performance. And I call it a hat pick. For both of them. Carey Price and Nick Suzuki. M more Carey Price. He made the save, you know? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Has there been a better save this season? I can't think of one. For our next hat pick, it it's not just how impressive a play is. Sometimes it's the context and who done it. And uh, Toby Reader, are you serious? Maybe Ben. And Klingberg had trouble with that. Reader racing after it. Here's Reader charging in. Shorthanded scores. Toby Reader, his second shorthanded goal of the postseason. And it's a one goal game. But everybody on the bench, on the Flames bench, just exploded up after that goal by Reader. And that might be the life they need with some time on the clock. A little bit more aggressive penalty killing to attack the puck carrier, and it's paid off with this. And for Toby Reader, one of the faster guys around, he gets his legs going into high gear and just is able to corral that puck at the last second and beats Bishop. We saw him score a shorthanded goal, the game-winning goal, in game one of the qualifying round against the Winnipeg Jets. And he pays off here as he gets in tight and finishes it to cut the lead to one. The Calgary Flames and Dallas Stars in a seriously tight and feisty series so far. I'm loving watching it. Can't take a second off in the playoffs. Everyone is dangerous at all moments. And Toby Reeder, especially when he's shorthanded, blows by John Klingberg. And that would be a hat pick on its own. But I'm going to pair it. Just a couple nights later, John Klingberg goes, not you again. Seven shot attempts and fires that one. Knocked out at the side of the net. Race for it here. Derek Ryan going after it. He's got Reader down the lane. Scores! Another shorthanded goal for Toby Reader. I mean, if you're an Oilers fan, do you laugh or cry? <laughs> that somehow in these playoffs, Milan Lucic and Tobias Reader would turn into the league's most unstoppable men. But we shouldn't be surprised. Tobias Reader's having success at scoring shorthanded goals. After all, he once scored two shorthanded goals 58 seconds apart. Oh yeah, that was against the Oilers too. Steve, stop turning the knife! Listen, you know who I cheer for. I'm in a bad mood, okay? Except for when I'm watching Toby Reader kill penalties. Wow, that's a hat pick. Lastly, and this is mostly just for Drew and the fact that it deserves to be in here. Kale McCarr. Puck is down, taken by McCarr, he'll find Graves. Up the boards and out he comes to the red line. Well, this guy got cut off, picked up though by McCarr. He's up the middle, McCarr down the slot, McCarr shoots and scores! Oh my goodness gracious! The kid coast to coast with the most, and the Avs have a 5-1 lead. That was amazing. 
And again, when you're watching Kale McCarr, the emotion he showed after that goal, nothing. I mean, you make a play like this, you are just off the charts, good hockey player. And then as he went around and he's getting congratulated by his teammates, it's just like, ho oh, hum. Pete, he just turned Goligoski inside yeah. out. Wow. It's just that, and Goligoski, now Goligoski got, you know, he got tripped up. He was in a bad situation. They, they give up, they give the puck away. And he now I was talking to Drew about potential hat picks, and I'm like, what about that ridiculous Nathan McKinnon play where he basically sets up Nazem Kadri for the easiest goal he's ever scored? And producer Drew, who had just finished texting me a graphic that Nazem Kadri has zero penalty minutes so far in these playoffs, said, no, no, the McCarr goal is actually better. And I said, what? And then I saw the McCarr goal, and Kale with no regard for human life. This is not the kind of Kale that is good for you. It's the kind that makes you retire mid-game. Kale McCarr walking Alex Goligoski walking anti-Ranta, and walking to a huge win in the playoffs over the Coyotes. And then they try to stick up for themselves. They're like, we're, we're gonna fight Nathan McKinnon, and they lose that too. Who looks scarier than the Colorado Avalanche right now? I don't know if anyone does. That's a hat pick. Drew, stop texting me things that hurt my feelings. So that is it for this week's edition of Steve's Hat Picks brought to you by Warrior Hockey. Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Let us know how we did. And if you're like, hey, that play wasn't in there that I thought should be, well, dang it's is in a few days and it might end up in there for very different reasons. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends. I got blue gloves now. I'm excited.